I came to reform the nation of my grandfather. We talked about Islam. So we asked the question, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you came to reform the nation. How you came to reform the nation? He continues, answers us. Uridu an amura bil ma'roof wa anha anil wunna. I came to reform how? By encouraging and enjoining good and forbidding evil. So he came to Karbala to reform the nation of his grand grandfather, the nation of his grandfather. They, they were deviating from the right path, from the path that Rasulullah worked hard and he put all of his effort for 23 years to create a path this way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as soon as Rasulullah was murdered, the Ummah started going toward left. It didn't go parallel to the path of Rasulullah. 
path of Rasulullah, straight, Sarat al Mustaqim, straight after the Holy Prophet's martyrdom, they start going left, 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 completely. By the time that it got to Yazid ibn Muawiyah, it was going backward. So Imam Hussain comes, he wants to bring the nation back all the way to reform it, to bring it back to the path of Rasulullah, which is the path of, path of Ahlul Bayt, which is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's only one path. What do we say is our prayer? It's only one path. It's not different path. Everybody has some part of the truth. No. It's only one path. One sarat which lasts, which ends by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the path of Ahlul Bayt How long Hussain alayhi salam wants to do it? Enjoy what is good. Encourage good. And discourage evil and bad. What is good? What is bad? We have to know what is good so we can encourage people to this good and enjoy good. And we have to know what is bad to tell people, okay, this is bad. Don't do it. Forbid people from doing it. This is <coughs> This is Rasala. This is fiqh. <coughs> we have in Rasala of all of the, our scholars, a chapter about Amr ibn Ma'ruf and Nahya al Munkar. The first condition, there are four conditions. The first condition before enjoining good and encouraging good and forbidding evil, you have to know what is right and what is wrong. If I don't know what is right and what is wrong, how can I encourage it? And how can I discourage also what is bad? So we have to know it. What is good? All that is halal and it's wajib and mustahab, it's all that's good. Everything. Whatever it is wajib and it is mustahab, it is good. And it is halal. And everything that is haram and it is makruh and it is, we should avoid it, that becomes evil. Very simple. But when we bring it to our life, we see it's completely the opposite. Let me read a narration, which if we really take this narration into action, like for these 13 nights of Muharram, 12 nights, we forgot everything. We forgot all the action plan that Sheikh told us. But if we remember this hadith of Rasulullah, and we truly put it into our action, that should be sufficient to change our life completely. <laughs> Companions are sitting next to Rasulullah and Rasulullah is telling them what I'm going to tell them. What will happen to you if your women start becoming corrupt? They become fast. And your youth start becoming fast. Fast means what? That he commits sin in front of everybody and he or she is powered. That becomes fast and continuously commits sin. Na'udhu <coughs> Billah. Completely away from us. And you don't encourage and you don't enjoy good. And you won't forbid evil. Is it possible? Will it come a time that people won't enjoy good anymore? Won't encourage good? Won't discourage evil? They're asking Rasulullah, is it possible that will the time come? Rasulullah said, فَقَالَ نَعَمْ وَشَرٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ It will happen, the time will come, that people won't enjoy good anymore, anymore, anybody else. They won't encourage good, and they won't discourage evil anymore. And it become worse than that. They said worse? Rasulullah said, yeah, of course, worse than that. فَكَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذَا أَمَرْتُمْ بِالْمُنْكَرَانِ وَنَهَيْتُمْ عَنِ الْمَعْرُوفِ what will happen to you if you start encouraging evil? Encouraging what? 
evil and discouraging good. The companions start becoming nervous. فَقِيلَ لَهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said to Rasulullah, وَكَيْفَ وَيَكُونُ ذَلِكَ Is it possible? It will come a time that people will encourage evil and discourage good? Rasulullah said, نَعَمْ وَشَرْرٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ It will happen. And it will happen worse than that. Worse than not encouraging good and not discouraging evil. Worse than encouraging evil and discouraging and forbidding bad, good. Rasulullah says, وَكَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الْمَعْرُوفُ مُنْكِرَ وَالْمُنْكَرُ مَعْرُوفَ What will happen to you when it comes a time that ma'roof will be munkar and munkar will be ma'roof? What is good amongst people will be known as bad and what is bad amongst people will be considered to be good. Is it possible for that time to come to happen? Or maybe it's another thousand years from now? Or it's for the aliens? No. Rasulullah Ta'ala, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking to you and me today. Is it possible? Of course. Let's look at our life. Let's look at our community. Let's look at our family. Let's look at our society to see where we are. Are we amongst the first group that they're not discouraging evil and they're not encouraging good? That's the first group that Rasulullah said it will come attack. Or are we amongst those group that they will encourage evil and they will forbid good? Or we are amongst the third group that good is evil for us and evil is good. Sheikh, is not possible. When right now, when I give the examples of our own communities that I have been around and it applies to the majority of our Muslim community, you see it unfortunately, unfortunately, it's becoming time that we are amongst the last group, amongst the third group. Which is completely against the teaching of Rasulullah, against the teaching of Allah, and against the teaching of Quran. Let's look at it. Example one. Let's look at our prayers. Is it ma'aruf? Is it known amongst our community, our family, that as soon as Adhan says, Allahu Akbar, everybody will start running to pray or no? Do we in our house, as soon as Adhan is said, everybody in the house will stop everything and they will gather to pray? Is it? One Alhamdulillah says, but majority no. Majority of the places no. Adhan said, what is ma'roof? That the kids are watching, they're playing with their games. A little bit older, they are working on their homework. Mom is cooking. The father is working on his business. Adhan comes. Inshallah, we'll pray because we still have time. So what is ma'roof right now? Ma'roof is to delay the prayer. Munkar is what? What is evil? Evil is to pray on time amongst the communities. Salat al Jama'ah in the center. Salat al Jama'ah in the center. Tonight we came. Salat al Jama'ah. Thursday night. Night that Allah will forgive the sins. Four or five people stood behind the Shaykh. Salat al-Jama'ah is losing its value amongst ourselves. It's becoming what? Salat al-Jama'ah is becoming evil. We don't say it, but with our action we're showing that Salat al-Jama'ah is no longer important for us. If they said that Thursday night, anybody who comes here, he will get a ticket and he, he will, there's a possibility for him to win a million dollars. Before they open the door, everybody's standing in line. Million dollar. Not knowing that one like of Salat al Jama'ah, how many thawab it has. Once in a while. The more examples that I'm going to give, please, again, as I said another night, let me think to myself where do I stand? Is ma'roof for me ma'roof truly? Is one can one can for me truly? Alhamdulillah. Let me go to the next level. Am I 
part of those people that they will encourage good and discourage evil or not I'm amongst those people who I don't care let the community go forward I don't care I do good and I don't care about the rest of the community so that's as far as our prayers is concerned with Salah is Amud al Deen if that is shaky come to the next marriage what is the age of marriage commonly known what is ma'roof what is known amongst the community for age of marriage 25 26 27 if a person wants to get married earlier look at you man why are you rushing it's okay you'll get married one day by that what are we doing we're discouraging what is what is the teaching of Ahlul Bayt which Ahlul Bayt taught us to get married at early age but what is ma'roof and instead of that ma'roof is education Education, education. I'm not against education. But we have to prioritize. What is more important for me? Marriage or education? I can gain education anytime that is possible. I can. And instead of me graduating at age 23, 24, let me get graduate at age 25, 26. Doesn't matter. But because my parents, for them, ma'roof is only education. They have so much brainwashed me that only education, forget about everything. Habibi, my beloved audience, this young individual goes to the university. Do you see what he sees and what she sees? Education and education. Alhamdulillah, my son is very religious. What, is his, what makes him religious? He has a bachelor in business. MashaAllah, I didn't know that having a bachelor in religion. Bachelor in business makes you religious. It's becoming ma'roof for us to delay it, delay it, delay it, which beco becomes ma'roof and it's one care to earn for early marriage. Let's get to the marriage itself. It's becoming ma'roof what? Expensive dowry. Maha, my cousin she got, this is a girl saying, my cousin she got $10,000 dowry, I have to get $15,000. How can I be saying I have to be more than that? She asked X and Y and Z for her mahar and in her house she wants this kind of TV, this kind of furniture, this kind of stuff. I mine has to be better. You see what becomes mahar amongst us? Reception comes. Which alhamdulillah, sheikhs are never invited to a reception. They're only there for nikah. As soon as the guy done, Sheikh, thank you so much. <laughs> because the Sheikh won't be able to see what's going to happen with the interceptions. Musiqa is haram. Sheikh, it's only one night. Let us have fun. It's only one night. A little bit of music and that's it. We're gone. We haven't done anything wrong. Let, it be. Let us be fun. We see Ma'aruf to be having fun with music in our reception. What kind of establishment would be to that family who starts their foundation with Haram? You think that family will last? That they start with Haram? They spend thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars for a ring. It has to be from X place so she can go out and look at my ring. My, my husband brought it for me. And instead of paying five thousand for that ring, we can pay one thousand dollars for a ring and spend give that four thousand to send it back to Pakistan and Iraq and Afghanistan. There are thousands of people who want to get married. They don't have money to buy the dinner for themselves, so they, they don't get married. That family will last long. There won't be any more divorce. Allah will look at this family who took a little bit away from themselves and gave it to someone else which is needy. This is becomes a community. This should be ma'roof. I was, my wife came to me and she said that one of her friends, she uh, tailors clothes for uh, the bride. She said that she tailored one gown, $40,000. I was like, what is it? Like they put diamond on everything? Like a diamond? Gold, silver, diamond, gold, silver. Well, the amount of fabric, the, the, the kind of fabric they use, and they got it in the best hotel, thousand dollar per person. I was like, Alhamdulillah, our marriage was in the basement of our house. 
and the bride were in, uh, the room were in the basement of my friend, and I went to after my wife with my niece on Altima, and we went home. That's it. We invited hundred, not hundred, fifty, sixty people. That's it. Why? Why should I make it more expensive for me to go and borrow loan and borrow money and borrow money and borrow money that I have to work double shift and three shifts to pay back for one night? What kind of life is that? And they said, I said, why don't you come to the community? Why don't you come for Salah? Brother, I have to work. Well, lower your expectation. You don't need to work for three shifts to pay for your debt for one night. You see what is becoming mad? We put ourselves into problems. And they say, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are you punishing us? What I have done. Allah said in the Holy Quran, everything that happens bad to you, you did it with your own hand. You put yourself in this problem. Don't look at me. I raise the expectation. I claim my son or my daughter to get married. As soon as they come to my... Let me give you what Rasulullah said. Rasulullah said, if a person came to you... Where is the teaching of Rasulullah in our life? Rasulullah said, if a person reaches you, came to you to ask the hand of, your, your hand of your daughter. If his moral is good and his deen is good, give him your daughter. What? Akhlaq and faith. When they come, what do we ask? How much is your income? What is, what education have you gotten? Bachelor or that's becoming old? Do you have a master's or higher? Like we're hiring somebody for our job. Do you have a house? Do you have a car? How much money are you getting? Where is akhlaq in there? Where is deen in there? Where, where, where does this go? Isn't Rasulullah our Rasul? Isn't our Prophet? Don't claim Rasulullah is your Prophet and I have don't, don't claim them to have the love. Do whatever you want. But if I claim that I love Rasulullah, I have to show Rasulullah that I really love him by my action. Knowing his hadith and applying when somebody comes, even if he is poor, if he doesn't have money, he will tell me, well, my parents, they have a, they have a house in the basement, they have a room, and they have a full bathroom. We'll start our life with that, alhamdulillah. Does he have a good akhlaq? Does he have deen? Take, my hand, take the hand of my daughter. How can we live in the basement? It's not possible. And we make it harder and harder. If I get married, I won't, I won't be able to finish my education. Who said so? Who said so? Get married. Same thing that they do outside. They have boyfriend and girlfriends in the school, in the universities. You get married and you go to school together. Is it possible? That is possible. But we, I'm going to say again, religion is secondary for us. Education is first. We see if we get married, our education, which gets us, you know why? Because we think on the day of judgment, when we stand, we say, Allah, this is my bachelor, can I get to heaven? <laughs> I have masters, I need to get a little bit higher. My bachelor, the, the, they are on the first floor, I have masters. Not knowing that Imam Salih al -Salam said, Man faqad The one who gets married early, he covers and he secures and he protects half of his faith. But for me, that is one cut. Ma'roof is for me to finish education. I don't know what else to say. Khums. Paying khums is becoming what? One cut. Not paying khums is what? It's good not to pay khums. I'm proud of it. I don't pay khums. That, you see, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and Ahl Bayt said, if we think to ourselves a little bit, if we calculate ourselves a little bit, we see that majority of ma'aruf that Allah and Ahl Bayt said, these are good, it's bad for us. And everything that they said is bad, it's good for us. Into our life. Hijab. Iranians were different kind of hijab. Iranian culture. Afghan were a different kind of hijab. Arabs, they were a different kind of hijab. Pakistanis, they were different hijab. Hindu, everybody, they have their own culture of hijab. Nobody comes to see what is the culture of Islam says about hijab. Everything, we go back to our culture. As soon as they ask, they ask us question, we go back to our culture. Well, my culture doesn't accept this. What is more important?
important for me, please. From tonight, that should become our action plan. As soon as we want to take decision, well, in X community, X culture, Sayyid should marry Sayyid. A non Sayyid cannot marry Sayyid. Who says? Girl called me and she was crying. Sheikh, my, I am Aduiya, I'm Sayyid. Eh? There is a boy. He's very good. My parents even, they, know, they love him as his akhlaq and his deen. Everything is good. But he's not Sayyid. They say you cannot marry him. What can I do? I said, what do you want me to do? I can talk to your parents. But I know that the culture for them is number one. Islam is not number one. I wish Islam was number two. Islam is number, it's not number two either. First, our own act. Well, I don't think this way of doing is a drought. So I go back to my life. Second, I go to my culture. Third, I go to my family. If I do this, the aunties will say this, and my uncle will say this. No, forget it. Fourth, I go to my own community. And then fifth, if there is, a, if there is no answer for me, let's see what Islam says. But as soon as we get to the problems, we come to the, Shaykh, let me have some du'a, let me have some verse of Quran. Astaghfirullah, I'll get to it. Islam said, from day one, you're supposed to come to me. I would give you a solution for every problem that you have before getting to that problem. If we don't want our youth to become, to commit sin, we have to make it easy for them to get married. When we, we make it harder and harder and harder, you commit sin. Who gets the blame? He gets the blame, and also the parents will delay them every day and every day. Well, he doesn't say anything. You as a parent have this responsibility. So our hijab, our culture, we have to start seeing, do we live according to Islam or according to my culture? A person, I was there last week, you know, within the Urdu community, when they do salam, they do like this. They say salam to the imam. A Lebanese guy came to me, he's like, Sheikh, why do you do like this? Well, I had to explain it to the best of my understanding. Well, they do it because of this, 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 this. When we pray, some people say, Assalamu alaikum three times. Some people say one time. When we come, people greet. Some people don't greet. Everything about our life is dependent on our culture, not about the Islam. Islam says, as soon as you see one another, don't start conversation as soon as you say salam. Don't start. Imam Hussein Ali Salam said it. Don't, if somebody talks to you without saying salam, don't say it. First say salam and then start. Ahl al-Bayt, they say, as soon as you see one another, have a smile on your face. When you look at the Muslim community, they see one another. What do you want, Imam? <laughs> but when you want to take the American and Canadian, as soon as they see you, you're a stranger to one another. Smile. That's it. This is the teaching of Islam. They are blind. But as Muslim, we don't have the culture of Islam. A friend of mine told me, he went back home to one of his Muslim country. He's like, I go around, when I say salam to people, people look at me like, why did he say salam to me? Like he wants something from me? Or why he said salam to me? It's becoming unknown. It's becoming munkar to say salam to one another. Because that is the culture. It's not the culture of Islam. Make Sister want to leave the house. She has a good hijab, inshallah. Well, it's a light makeup. It's a light makeup. It's nothing. It's light. <coughs> According to some maraja, some maraja, without makeup, if you are really beautiful, that you attract yourself, you have to cover your friend's face too. According to some of the maraja. But brother, it's a light makeup. Well, it stops us from day one. Nothing. Well, that light makeup starts from what? Shaitan comes step by step. Step by step. Shaitan is not going to come to tell your sister, take your hijab out, wear mini skirt and go out. He knows you're not going to listen. Slowly, step, <coughs> step by step. That's why the Quran says what? لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. Don't follow the footstep of Shaitan. Not to follow, not, he didn't say, Quran didn't say, don't follow Shaitan. Don't follow the footstep of Shaitan. Because when you start following the footstep, slowly, 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 it's going to come. It starts with a little, a little bit light, and then a little bit, that light is no longer satisfying. That little bit light becomes a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. See, 
متعة. Is it ma'aruf or munkar? I'm not promoting it and I'm not degrading it. It's a concept. It's a solution. It's what? A solution, not the solution. And everybody knows about English. When you say a, it means there are other solutions also. When you say the, this means this is the only solution. No, it's a solution to the society. A society will face a problem. Allah knows that the Muslim will not get start early marriage. So Allah says, well, this young individual, he has a need. She has a need. Well, he is a solution. And instead of committing haram, na'udhu billah, and instead of committing adultery, na'udhu billah, here's a solution. But as soon as we hear somebody has done mut'ah, that's it, that becomes an X. It's like he joined maybe like FBI or he joined like a gang. If he is part, he did mut'ah. It's becoming, but if he's dating, it's if they're a friend, they're friends. Dating, it's okay. Dating, which is haram, becomes ma'roof. I, I had family who came to me, the, the son and the, the daughter, the, the girl said, don't tell our parents we're doing this because they said you are allowed to be boyfriend girlfriend and but don't do sikh don't do what and we try to be together i'm not promoting or degrading sikh it's a concept it's a solution to the problem that the society is facing for it not to not to get into haram allah and basically here's a solution also when you go to the doctor you say for example i have x disease in my leg well, cutting is not something good. But when it starts sweating, that becomes a solution. You have to cut it. You have to cut it. Go. I'm not comparing these two, but as I say, it's a solution. The problem is there. Either we start promoting, encouraging everybody to get to start marrying early, or we have to change our mind about it. Let me go a little bit basic. When we invite people to our house, and this is the argument majority of the husbands they have with their wife. Wifey, please cook one or two dish. Two dishes is enough. No, it's not. We need rice, we need stew, we need another stew. There should be chicken, meat should be there. And then we add and add and add. And then the rest will be what? Waste. <coughs> you see, very basic things. Very basic. But all of these things add one another. Forgiving one another. Is it ma'roof that if somebody did something wrong to us, somebody wronged us, is it ma'roof, is it known for one another to forgive? Or no? Somebody did something wrong to us, ages and ages and years and years we keep this, he wronged me. We're not going to forgive it until we pay it back. And then, right now we are equal. And I have to do something more to make sure I have paid him back to perfect. <coughs> Forgiving one another. <coughs> the same thing applies to the house, wife and husband. Why we end up to divorce? Because we don't forgive one another. He said this, oh, I said this, and she said this, and back and forth, how dare you talk? And then problem starts and on and on. Was not forgiving because forgiving, we haven't been taught. <coughs> and we haven't educated ourselves, and this is not going to be transferred to our next generation, forgive. He did something wrong, accidentally. He said something wrong, accidentally. The teachings of Ahl al-Bayt are very beautiful. It's full of knowledge. Meaning, if a person told you something bad, he cursed, he bad mouthed you, to your face, you have to put 70 if, 70 <coughs> times, well, maybe he didn't mean, he didn't address it to me. He talked to your face. Maybe he didn't know the meaning of what he said. Maybe he was talking to someone else and accidentally he said. Maybe he wanted to say something and then you put maybe, maybe 70 times. Do we do that? As soon as somebody says something to us, we go right away to the meaning. I have to pay it. Obeying parents, kids, is it ma'roof amongst them? Is it known amongst them to obey parents? 
Or if they see somebody's obeying their parents, they say, well, what's wrong with this guy who's obeying the parents? You listen to your parents, and what always these Walt Disney movies and cartoons are promoting, you're always disrespecting parents. Always disrespecting parents. Always parents are wrong and kids are right. When you look at these movies, I spent time with my kids to watch this movie. This is one thing that we have, as a parents, we have to do. Either don't bring kids, but when you bring kids, you have responsibility. And it's not only buy him clothes and feed him, no. Imam Hassan alayhi salam says, عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَتَفَكَّرُ فِي مَأْكُولِهِ وَلَا يَتَفَكَّرُ فِي مَأْكُولِهِ I'm wondering, I'm, I'm really curious how people think and care about what they eat, what they consume, but they don't think what they're feeding their brain. My kids, what they're being seeing, I have to see with them to let them know this is why this is wrong. I cannot tell them no. I'm going to sit with them, see, and I'm going to tell them, well, see, you see that? Every time that my son likes to play, <coughs> okay, let's watch it. After we finish, what did you learn? I said, this, this, this. I told him, did you see this also? He said, yeah. I said, did you see this also? This is what they're trying to promote. I have to educate them. And when you see the theme of the majority of these animation, it's about kids being right and parents being wrong. And I'm busy because the wife has had increased expectation in the house. Because I have increased expectation in the house, I have to work hours and hours. I don't see what my kids see. And you go on and on. Here are only some examples of what our society is going through. Where we are. So we have to come together as a community to help this. One more last example. One last example. Is it ma'roof when the husband comes home for the lady to complain or not to complain? As soon as the father gets home, the mom starts. You left me with these kids. You don't know what they did. Everything is on me. I complain, I complain, I complain, I complain. Well, the man tolerates it once, tolerates it twice. Tolerated three times. Fourth time, you call the sheikh. Sheikh, tell me that how we do talaq. It's going to end up there. It's ma'roof. How we know ma'roof? When the husband walks in and he doesn't hear his woman, his wife complaining, he thinks to himself, something has happened. She's not complaining. And vice versa. Is it ma'roof? Is it well known for the husband to work at home to do some cleaning? Of course. He, of course. And he comes home. He says. The tea should be next to him, the TV. And the poor lady, she is cooking, and cleaning, and cleaning. How do we know? Because as soon as the husband starts getting the vacuum in his hand, the wife looks surprised. Like, what has happened outside that he's in the house? It's all about Amir Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam said, let's have salam. fight and maybe I'm going to see half of you guys tomorrow night, but I have to say this. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Rasulullah said to Imam Ali alayhi salam, if a man helps his wife in the house for, by cleaning and helping, even if he has sins as the amount of hair on his body, Allah will forgive him. All of his sins. Helping in the house. When you look at it from the psychological point of view, it's to put families together. It's to bring love to the families. Islam has teaching for every second of our life. Has a teaching. But we rely again back to our culture, not to what Rasulullah and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muhammad Jal Ali So we have to come together <coughs> and we have to start as a community. Start encouraging good. Allah says in the verse that I read, Kuntum khayra ummatin. You were good nation sent to people, evolve. Ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna anil munkar. If you stop encouraging good and forbidding evil, you are not the best of nations anymore. Best of nation depends on 
encouraging good and discouraging evil. This is what Imam Hussein السلام, came to do. I came to reform. How to reform? I want to encourage good, enjoy good. What is good? Everything that they say is halal and logical good. Steps to encourage good and discourage evil. Number one, by our physical impression, if somebody is doing something good, we have to encourage it by our physical impression. How? We should get happy. They did something wrong. They helped in the center, we show them smiley face that we approve, we encourage, we promote, we love what you did. As, as, at least with our facial expression, which we will get thaw up for that. And if somebody is doing bad, we're sitting in a gathering, somebody is doing ghibah, gossip, backbite, we have to get upset. We have to frown, like, okay, I don't like what is happening. I have to show I am not happy with what is happening. But unfortunately, we see the opposite. People start gossiping, and we start laughing, and yeah, I see this also, and we start continuing. What are we doing? We're promoting it. And guess what? We gossip, other people gossip behind our back, and other people gossip on their back, and the whole community gets into a mess. But we have to change. Somebody does something good. If we encourage it, he does more. And it's good for the community. We got the thawab of him doing it. Even we didn't do it ourselves. By, ju by, by just encouraging them when they do something good. MashaAllah, thank you. My son gets up in the morning, prays in the morning first time. Prays on time. I should reward him. Well, I want to buy something for my kids. I want to buy them gifts. When they do something good, I should encourage them. Not, I will leave it until your birthday. What is the occasion of the birthday? He was born? Good. He was born. But when he did, I really am against birthday parties. My, myself. What I do for my kids, when they do something good, I encourage them. You help? Here's something for you. You respected your mom? Here's something. You went to the masjid, you helped cleaning, here is a gift for you. These are the things that have to be promoted. Two places. Also, I show, I show you my own experience. Two times, I told my family, we go out, it's a shopping day. Shop as much as you want. Eid al Ghadir, Eid al Walaya. I told them, let's go. So they will remember Eid al Ghadir. Because people forgot Eid al Ghadir, Karbala happened. If they would remember Ghadir, Karbala wouldn't happen. Inshallah, we will talk tomorrow. What do we mean by Ghadir? Ghadir is a faith. Ghadir is an ideology that it wasn't applied. That's why we got to Karbala. That's why we are. Because we forgot Ghadir. We have to promote. 15th of Shaban comes, it's the birthday of the Imam. Let's go shopping al Bayou so we start connecting between him and Imam Zaman. Well, Imam Zaman is a happy time for me. While I was growing up, every time Imam Zaman came to my mind, it was that happiness. What do I need to do in return for my Imam Zaman? So number one, physically, facial expression, we show that we are against good, bad, and we are encouraging good. Second, verbally, we say it nicely, with respect. If somebody, we saw that is doing something, well, we take him away as soon as they leave. We tell them, look at the life I have All of you guys know this story. When Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Hussein alayhi salam, they came as a young individual, a couple of, eight, couple of years old, they came and they saw that older individual was doing wudu wrong, what they did. <laughs> if it's us, brother, you're doing this haram! <laughs> In front of everybody. What they did, they said and they told the Imam to this older individual, we are going to do wudu in front of you. See which one of us is doing it right, which one is doing it. We have to learn these small things from the life of Ali. They are not small. They are fundamental for our belief and our life. I come home, I see my wife has done something wrong. In front of the kids and everybody. You did wrong. Sheikh said, I have to discourage you. You did wrong. Well, I didn't say to say it in front of the kids. When you guys are going to go back to bed, say, well, I think what you did, it was not right. You think it was right. Can we do something to fix it? And slowly, slowly that relationship will be built back again. 
very important points. Number one, we have to prepare the platform for our self and our kids not to sin, not to do wrong. When I tell him, and also with this, أَقْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Encouraging could always come first and then نَحْيَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ When you start encouraging good, bad will automatically start getting away. I tell him, I prepared a platform for him to get married, automatically he's not going to commit sin. I tell my son, don't befriend these people, but first I have to befriend him, number one, and I have to prepare the environment for him to be able to befriend with me. I know family from Virginia. They moved to three different states for, in order to put their kids into Islamic school, full-time Islamic school. They moved three times within two years, two years. They went to the state, Islamic school it was good, bad, they moved because they want their kids to be friend good people. If you want your kids to be friend good people, you have to start gathering with this, this, this majalis. These majalis promote good people. You can't find good friends for your kids and you have to be friend. So I start encouraging good, evil will start getting away. Another point. Sheikh, why should we care? I'm doing good for myself. Why should I care? Why should I encourage? I'm good. Inshallah, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will see my rewards and my deeds. It will send me to heaven. Why should I care? I'll give you this example. A group of people sitting on a ship in the middle of the ocean. A person starts digging a hole at the corner, his corner. Would you say, well, it's his corner. Forget about it. I'm sitting on this side. I don't care about it. Everybody will jump and they will stop him. Why? Because as soon as that all is bit, done to that ship, everybody will sink. If I don't help my brother and my sister and my, the member of my community with his son, his son will start affecting my son and everybody will start drowning. So we should change that mentality. One gets to two, to three, to four, to five, and it will start getting everybody. So we should change that mentality. I don't care, we're gonna have I don't care. It's gonna have effect. More points that we have to, our intention should be sincere. When we are, no, I want to show, okay, you see, I know what is halal, you don't know, listen to me. No. Seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to find a way to time. Sheikh, I told him once, it didn't work. I told him twice, it didn't work. I left <coughs> Let me give you an example. When you try to open a can, you have a can, peanut butter can, jar. You try to open it. It doesn't open. Do you throw it in the trash? No. You give it to your friend. Can you open this? He cannot open it. He gives it to another, another person until they can open it. You're not going to tra trash it, will you? Same thing, I couldn't help, I couldn't influence him. I'm gonna find someone else that can influence him. I'm gonna tell someone else, can you tell him also? We go around. The same way that we do with the can, if we cannot open it, we're gonna give it to someone else to open it. Well, the same thing, I wasn't able to, I was able to influence him. Can you influence him? Well, we said, it, we, nobody, he didn't hear. You got the throw up. You said it. You are going to get the thawab, doesn't matter if he listens or if he doesn't listen. Listen. Oh. Reaching Karbala, 
A man told him, John, thief, I'll let you free. He started crying and shedding tears. His heart broke. He said, Imam, how can I let you go? How can I let you alone and I go away? I was with you during a time of happiness. How can I leave you during a time that you have nobody to help you? Is it because my color that you are tr trying to get away from to, to let me go? Is it that you don't see me worthy of being merged into your path? Imam Hussein Ali Salam said, no, I didn't want you to be killed for my sake. But it's okay, if you want to be, it's okay. These are sincere people who were with Imam Hussein Ali Salam. <laughs> one after one, they, they joined the companions of Imam Hussein Ali Salam. Habib ibn Mabahir came. Muslim ibn Awsaja came. Wahab came. Zuhair came. One after one, they start joining the combat, the army of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Everybody was there for Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the night of Ashura. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he said, now I'm going to turn off the light. Everybody who wants to go, let them go. Please take the hand of my family also with you. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam and the rest of the companions, they said Imam Hussein alayhi salam's words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we won't leave you, we won't abandon you. Zuhair ibn Qayn said, oh Imam Hussein, if I die 1,000 times and I come back alive, I will again help you and defend you. Then they start, the day of Ashura happened, one after one, they went to the battlefield. <coughs> Each one of them that they will go and they will die, before the last breath, they will call Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein alayhi salam would rush toward them, he would sit next to them, he would take their head on his lap, he would say salam to them and he would start crying for them. Oh Imam Hussein, Ali, oh Imam Hussein, when you died, when you were massacred, there was nobody to take your head on their lap. One of the people who went to the battlefield was Muslim ibn Awsaja. He went to the battlefield and he started fighting and fighting until they came and they surrounded him from all the sides. When that happened and they started fighting him until he fell down, Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Habib ibn Madahir came to his to by himself, by him. And Habib ibn Madahir told him, Muslim, do you have last word to tell me? Muslim started shedding more tears and he said, Alayka bihad al I advise you to be next to this person who was ready on this land, who doesn't have anybody else to help him one after one. John went and he started fighting. When he fell down, Imam Hussein alayhi salam came to him. Imam Hussein alayhi salam did something very special. He placed his cheek on the cheek of John. Exactly what he did for his son, Ali al Akbar. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I'll say.